I'm out here at the Little Manger again today, and the plan is to take the New Holland with the box scraper and try to clean all of this old hay and manure out of here. I think this would actually be perfect for putting in the manure spreader, so what I'm gonna try to do is kind of pile this stuff up in the corner. While I've got the box scraper on the tractor, I'm also gonna run into the barn and sort of do a little polish clean job on that and get that floor clean enough to eat off of so that maybe next weekend sometime I can get the small square blocks into the barn. I know I've been doing a lot of tractor videos lately and I know that a lot of people wanna see animal videos. They wanna see cow videos. The truth of the matter is, is that when you raise livestock, this is what most of your days look like. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Although I'm not going to be building anything right here where I've got all this scrap of wood piled up, I think that I still need to move it because it would be nice to go ahead and scrape this out as well while I'm doing everything else. Plus, there's a bunch of good composted manure right here that I don't want to miss out on. So, yeah, the first thing that I got to do is move this pile. I'm just going to try to put it over here by the old hog barn and stack it in such a way where I can come back with the tractor and the forks and pick it up and move it. I need to save a few of these boards though because the plan is to make a concrete form with them that is gonna go in this little corral. I really don't wanna buy brand new boards just to do that and I think these are straight enough and as long as I have enough stakes in the ground, they're gonna be fine and that'll save me some money. So I gotta kinda figure out which are the best ones to save for that and the rest of them are probably just gonna end up in the burn pile. I don't know if the microphone on the camera is picking up these cows, but they are just relentless bawling at me this morning. And I have found that one of the big disadvantages to doing frequent pasture moves is that the cattle kind of get conditioned to every time they see you, they're going into a new pasture. So on days when you need to come here and do work, but it's not time for them to move yet, this is what you gotta listen to. This water trough that is actually an old bathtub that you've maybe seen sitting in the background originally was placed about, well, about right where it's at. And the problem that I was having year after year is that the cows would make mud there and they would end up stepping through that pipe and breaking the pipe and trying to dig this up in December when it's already muddy and get everything to dry and fix the pipe was just a nightmare. So what I ended up doing was moving the water trough over here next to the building. <clears throat> but eventually, over time, I started having the same exact problem and they were stepping down through that pipe, breaking the pipe, and it only happens in December and January when it's muddy out here anyway. So I got tired of that. I finally abandoned this pipeline because it just kept breaking and I put a temporary trough out in the pasture. Now, as you guys may know, I have a bad habit of letting temporary fixes stand for much longer than they should. So this year, the plan is to pour a nice concrete slab here right along this pipe and then tap into the pipe, but plumb it in such a way so that the water trough is not right over the pipe. Anyway, I'm, I'm trying to fix this the right way so that it won't continue to be a problem for years to come. But none of that's gonna happen today other than saving the boards to make the form for the concrete. So I just kinda wanted to tell you guys, uh, just give you an idea of kinda what's coming. All right, let's get all these boards moved. I kind of have a newfound sense of urgency with this project and wanting to get it done. And the reason for that is that originally I didn't plan on using this uh, area to feed cattle until about November or December. But now my kind of new plan, it's, you know, plans are always evolving. But my new plan is I'm not going to graze this little 
I think this is about one acre, this pasture here. I'm not gonna let the main cow herd out here anymore. I wanna try to stockpile this up for a couple weeks or maybe a month. And then I, my plan is to turn the butcher steers out and give them access to that. But while they are out there grazing that, it would also be nice if this manger was done and I could put a round bale in here as well because in about the beginning of October, I like to start pushing feed on them to try to get them to uh, gain some weight. So it'll accomplish two things. It will accomplish that. They're, they're gonna have more than they can eat out here, but it will also get them off of the other pasture so that as the grass starts to slow down, we're slowly diminishing the number of cattle that are on it so that it can kind of keep up with them just a little bit longer. I've still got four posts here that need to be yanked out of the ground and I don't really have a good post popping setup with me at the moment, but I do have a tractor and I do have a chain. So if I can sort of hook the chain to that box scraper, a lot of these are pretty loose. I think they'll come right out. That big old railroad tie, probably not. Um, I may just tug on it a little bit and see what happens, but let's go ahead and get these out. It would be nice to get the scraper in here and scrape this out as well. And that would be a lot easier if I'm not having to fight these posts. Well, that last post that I thought was gonna be one of the easier ones actually fought me pretty good. And it was really tweaking on that box scraper and kind of had me nervous. So I think after doing that, I have decided that I'm not even gonna try to pull on that railroad tie. I'll come back with the proper setup and, and it should come out no problem. So got all my posts out of the way now. Uh, we can start scraping.
Well, I have been scraping and scraping on this for what seems like hours now. It probably hasn't been that long, but you can see that I haven't really been able to get down very deep, although I've got a pretty decent pile of manure over here. So a couple things that I'm noticing. This manure is so old and compacted that it's sort of formed a layer and the box scraper is having a tough time digging through that. The other thing that I'm kind of pleased about is that it looks like down underneath all of this manure there is a good base of gravel. So grandpa must have dumped gravel in here years ago. I never really knew that was there, but I think if I keep getting all this manure off the top that will actually get down to a pretty solid base. So in order for me to break up this top solid layer here, and you can see how uh, platy the dirt breaks off of there. But this, make no mistake, this is good composted manure here. And I think this is gonna be perfect for filling up the manure spreader and putting out on the field. But if I wanna get this up, I'm either gonna have to come through here with a shovel and sort of pop it all up by hand, which I've been doing a little bit, or I can just come in with the box scraper, get everything on top that's loose out of here, and then come back with my little three-point chisel and try to break this up, and then come back again with the box scraper and get the rest of it. So yeah, that's a lot of different times over it with the tractor, but I think bringing the little three-point chisel over here is gonna be the way to go, because it'll just take me forever to try to do all this by hand. And one more thing that I did want to show you guys before I keep going, I know I, I keep getting sidetracked, but I just want to show you the power of composted manure and hay. Now, for whatever reason, there's a lot of hay on the ground here. As I'm filming this, it is September. We haven't had rain for months, and we have had strings of hot day after hot day. But if you look at this, where I peeled the layer off, it's still wet down here. So <laughs> the manure and the hay has held that water for months with hot temperatures, no rain at all. That's pretty impressive. sure what happened here but these last two posts are too close together I actually can't back the scraper in here so that's kind of a bummer I'm thinking hoping that I've got this dug out enough that I can start pulling past as long ways here I'm not really sure though I'm gonna have to try to back in and see how much headroom I have it's gonna be really close if I don't fit then I'm starting to think what I may end up having to do is to put the loader bucket back on the 8 in, um, come over here and clean the rest of this out with that. I'm going to try this though before I give up completely and see how it goes, but uh, I've got plan B lined up, so if this doesn't work then we know what we have to do. She is being so good. You know, I was actually nervous about bringing her over here uh, while the equipment was running, but for such a young pup, she really seems to understand the whole stay in one place concept. I don't have to correct her too many times. I do have to, <laughs> but she's getting better. And yeah, if she just stays like that and sleeps in the corner while I work, I don't know what more I can ask for.
Well, I think I've done about all I can do with that New Holland. It's just too tall. It's wanting to hit this brace right here and I just can't, can't seem to scrape enough out of here to make it where I'll fit. So I think it makes a lot more sense to just bring the 8N down here with the loader. It'll fit under here no problem and I can get all of this stuff out. While I've got the bucket hooked up, I'm gonna go clean the barn out like I was wanting to and then we'll see where we're at. Cleaning this barn out should be a lot easier than it normally is because I've already done it once this year. So really all of this hay that you see is from when I was moving the, the round bales out to make room for the square bales. The hardest part about this is gonna be these two broken round bales here in the back where the cows were able to reach through and chew through the net wrap. And now they have left me with a bale that I cannot pick up with the spear. So I just need to get the net wrap pulled out of there. And then I'm hoping that I can kind of drag it out with the, uh, with the box scraper. Well, it may not be clean enough to eat off of for me, but it's clean enough to do what we need to do. You may notice that I still have this broken round bale here in the corner. And the more I got to looking at it, the more I started thinking, the core is still intact. A lot of the body of the bale is still there. I'm wondering if I couldn't pick this thing up with the spear. I think I owe it to myself to try because it is a real pain to pitchfork this out. But if I could pick that up, and get it out of here, even if I, if all I can do with it is dump it in the uh, round bale feeder ring, that would still be better than pitching it out of here with the pitchfork. So, I think I've done about all the damage I can do over here today with the New Holland, and now the rest of the jobs are gonna be up to the 8N. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Mm -hmm.